Hi there, welcome to another episode of Run, Hike, Explore. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Sawyer Squeeze Water Filtration System. This is the uh, 1 liter 0.1 micron squeeze filter system. I'll show you how to use it, a couple of tips and tricks on collecting the water, avoiding cross-contamination of your clean drinking water, and how to take care of the filter and keep it clean so it lasts a lifetime. Let's take a look at what's in this box. So I've had this Sawyer squeeze filter for a while. I happen to keep the box, so I don't want you to think this is exactly how it comes from the factory in terms of how they pack it. But what do you get? You get, let's see here, let me just dump it all out. All right, the main thing, of course, is the filter. This is the squeeze filter. You can tell from the flow arrow, this is where the dirty water goes in. This is where the clean water comes out. I'll show you how to use that. This is the bag the actual squeeze bag. This is what you would fill up with your dirty water. We're going to connect it to the end of this squeeze filter and uh, put the clean water in a clean bottle. This is a little drinking cap they give you. So if you want to just cap this off, you can actually drink directly from, from the end of this uh, if you want to. I don't typically use that. And then this is the cleaning syringe. I'll demonstrate how to use this. You draw in clean water and then we're going to connect it. Oops, connect it to the the output into this and blast clean water, reversing any dirty water out the filter. But there's a few tricks to that, or not really tricks, but a couple of facts you need to keep in mind when you use it. And we'll get to that in just a few minutes. So this is about the best case scenario you'll probably find out on the trail when it comes to collecting dirty water. You've got some fast moving water and it's got a little bit of a waterfall. So to fill up this bag, again this bag is used to collect the dirty water. I'm just going to hold it under this stream. Doesn't take long. The force of the water will help uh, expand this bag. And now I have a bag of dirty water. But let's go through a few different scenarios you're likely to encounter because you're not always going to see a perfect fast flowing waterfall like this when you're out backpacking or hiking and you need to collect some dirty water. So you might encounter a scenario where there's some movement in the water but when you put the bag in there's really not enough force to like push the bag open or inflate the bag or to fill it with water. So let me show you what you do there. So if the water is not moving hard enough or fast enough to inflate or fill up the bag. One trick that I use is you can inflate the bag first. Now you don't want to put your mouth on this because we're going to assume it's got contaminated water on it. But if I make just a little, like a little tunnel with my hand, now that I've blown up the bag and inflated a little bit, let's go back to that kind of slow moving water and see how we do. I've got the uh, bag kind of inflated a little bit. And when I hold it in the water, now I can tell it's filling up much better. Give it a little motion. There we go. Now, it's not completely full. You'll never get it, well, I, I never get it totally full, but uh, another way to get the water in there in slightly slower moving situation. Uh, here's another trick that I use to get around the inflatable inflating bag issue and that is I take a, a water bottle with me I designate this as my dirty bottle and have no trouble filling this guy up there we go nice bottle of dirty water now um, I'll tell you one of the reasons I use this particular brand and you've probably heard this if you've done much research on the Sawyer squeeze system is the threads uh, fit and work with the the squeeze filter itself. This isn't the only brand that does it. A lot of two liters, a lot of other water bottles will, but uh, I use this because I like the smooth outside. I can slip it in and out of my pack very easily. And again, the threads happen to fit. So that's another easy way to get some dirty water. Everything you've seen so far is kind of a best case scenario. You might reach a situation like this where the water is just kind of clinging to the rock as it goes over and there's not enough flow for a true waterfall. And obviously that gets a little tough to fill up. You can see there's really hardly even a trickle going in there. So one trick I saw out on the AT is you can put a, like a little leaf here. Works better if you get a fresh kind of stiff leaf and put a rock on it. And you can basically create 
your own miniature waterfall and then use that to fill up. Now that's a little better and it really depends on uh, the kind of leaf you can find and variations of that. I mean you get the idea you could probably use a piece of curved bark but the idea is stick something in here give yourself a small waterfall easier to refill your dirty bottle. So of course when you're getting the dirty water you've got dirty water on your hands on the outside of this bag so before you go back and get near any of your clean bottles or the water filter itself get a towel get something and dry this off. You don't want to go through all this hassle of filtering and cleaning your water only to have some drops from the outside run down and get into your clean water bottle and uh, potentially ruin your trip with some contaminated water. So now for the part you've been waiting for. You've got your bag of dirty water, you've got your filter, and you've got your empty clean bottle. This is not the bottle you used for any water collection. This has been a pristine bottle that you've only had clean water in. Here's the filter. You'll notice from the flow arrow, you can tell which way to screw it onto your bag of dirty water. You want to get it snug, but don't over tighten it. You don't need to crank this thing down really hard. Just make sure it's snug. And then when you turn it over, it's going to take a little bit of water just to kind of prime this filter. So the filter itself is going to soak up some water. But as you begin to gently squeeze, you'll have clean water coming out. Now notice I'm holding it at an angle. And the reason I'm doing that is if I hold it straight up and down, there's an opportunity for some dirty water that I may have missed to come down on the outside, run down, and go into my clean water bottle. If I keep it at an angle, that's less likely to happen. In fact, the way I can remember to do that is, you know, back in the 1920s, they redesigned water fountains so that they shot out the water at an angle instead of straight up. And that was one of the reasons they were able to cut down on communicable diseases transmitted through water fountains. So keep it in an angle. That way, any potentially dirty water doesn't come all the way down and go in. So I keep a gentle squeeze on it. And there we go. Clean water. So you've been using the filter for a day or two and you want to clean it. Obviously, as you're using this filter and the dirty water is flowing through, the contaminants that it's trapping are building up in the filter inside of here. So the way you clean it out is you draw up some clean water in the syringe and then you blast that water reverse backwards through the filter. Again, has to be clean water in this syringe. If you back blast it with dirty water, you've probably ruined the filter or, or at least made it suspect for future use. So always draw in clean water, which is what I have here. And you want to get uh, a full syringe worth. All right, now, this doesn't uh, screw on or connect in any way other than you just hold it together. But when you do this, the first blast is the most important one. You want it to be firm and fast to blast out as much of the particulates as you can. Now when I say blast out, it's just gonna, the water's gonna run out. But the first push is important because if you just, if you ease into it, what happens is the water creates these little channels of least resistance and then any future reverse flushes doesn't blast out the other areas because the water's just gonna go through the paths that you kind of created with the slow push. So remember, first one, do it quick and do it strong. One more thing to note when you're cleaning out this filter. You know, I've said, make sure the first blast is, you know, strong and forceful so that you get an even cleaning of the filter. One problem I had on one of the earlier one of these that I owned is I actually snapped, I snapped off this syringe plunger. You can tell you can probably see it's got some notches down here around it. I'm not sure why those are there, but they are a weak point. And what happened is, as I pushed it, it just snapped. So I think keep it firm and pressure 
but don't get so excited that you just you snap the whole syringe off. Hey, thanks a bunch for watching another episode of Run, Hike, Explore. Hope you appreciate the information that was shared regarding the Sawyer Squeeze filter. We covered the water collection scenarios you're likely to face when you're out in the wild and some tricks to overcome them, how to use the filter without cross-contaminating your clean water, and how to clean the filter at the end of the day, or at least every couple of days, depending on how frequently you're using it and how dirty the water is. So whether you're out there running, hiking, exploring, or whatever it is you're doing, make sure you stay hydrated. That's important. And remember, it's your world. Go live in it.